right guys um so i just thought i would do a quick video um talking about atlantic and kind of the structure of atlantic and what my classes look like so that you can kind of get an idea for that because it might be strange for you to just be coming along if you don't really know what that is so i'm gonna start at the top so nyu is a really big school so we have a bunch of different um schools within our school. So everyone's NYU, but we have different colleges. So we have um, Tisch, which is um, School of the Arts. And then we have like Steinhardt, uh, which, what is it? Education? Something else. So there's more to that, but mine <laughs> for that is education. We have Tandon for engineering. We have Stern. Um, we, we, tons of different ones. So I'm in Tisch, right? at least for my drama major. And then within Tisch, there's different majors. So we have like dance majors, we have, um, I think we have video game design, a couple others, film is in there. And then we have drama. So I'm a drama major. And then within the drama major, we have what we call different studios. And the different studios are all different um, techniques or approaches to acting, except for P&D, which is production and design. And that studio is for students who are looking into costuming and lights and set building and light, or I already said lights, but the technical aspects of the theater. So then the other ones we have, so I'm in Atlantic. So it goes, yeah, Tish, Drama, Atlantic. Um, there's also Stella Adler, there is Meisner, there's ETW, Experimental Theater Wing, um, there's tons of studios I feel like. Um, new studio is the musical theater department, so a bunch of studios. And then I'm in Atlantic. And then Atlantic is a three-year studio. So as you enter NYU, when you audition, um, if you get in, you'll be placed in a primary studio. And what that means is for the first two years you're here at NYU, you're gonna be with that studio. So if they put you in Adler, you are gonna be with Adler for your primary training first two years. So right now I'm a second year in Atlantic. So I'm still in my primary training. And then at the end of this year, they're actually coming up, we have the opportunity to audition to transfer into different studios. So say I really wanna go to ETW, I can audition and if I get in, I can go to them for my last two years, um, more or less. There are some exceptions and some, yeah, some like one year things. But Atlantic is a little different because you cannot transfer into Atlantic. If you start with us, you can finish that third year, but they only offer three years. Um, they don't offer two as you're, as your advanced training so but no one else like if an ETW student wanted to come to Atlantic they couldn't do it so as a second year let's see what all I, I wrote some notes because I wanted to make sure I got everything for you guys okay so just as far as logistics wise um, Atlantic is by Chelsea um, Market I almost said studios different place uh, it's by Chelsea Market so it's right on the pier um, it's a it's a bit from uh, the campus. It depending on where your dorm is, you can be anywhere from like 15 minute walk to like 30 minute walk, 35 minute walk. Um, there are subway lines that go there, but in the morning, it is quite possible for the subway to not be working, um, for them to be delayed. So it is kind of safer if you walk in the morning, take the subway back. And there's also the cost factor. I know that I try to walk as much as I can, one, because it's nice to walk, and two, because money. Um, yeah, so just so you know that. So when you go, you have to bring all of your props and all of your costumes and for like one of our courses you need a yoga mat and you might need some other things so it can it can be a lot uh, most of the other studios are right on campus so they are very fortunate um yeah and for first years it is tough because you are on meal plan so getting your some sort of a lunch from the dining halls the night before is a little bit difficult because the grab and go options aren't like the best, but it's doable and for your first year you can make it happen. But that is just something to note. All right, 
So I'm going to be talking through the second year schedule. If you guys want to hear about what a first year schedule looks like, totally leave me a comment below. I'd be happy to do that. It's just this is going to take forever if I do both. So let me know. So as far as second years, we have studio on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we uh, on Tuesday and Thursday, you have your academic classes. So the schedule has changed this year. Um, we used to go from 8.30 in the morning until 6.30 at night. Now we go from 9 in the morning to 5 at night. Um, they were having too many contact hours with the students and NYU kind of stepped in and said like, hey, you know, that's like too much. So they've kind of reduced it um, to mixed reviews from students. And let's see, I had a thought, what was it? Maybe it'll come back to me. So we are there nine to five. Oh, this is what it was. So we are probably one of the, um, I don't want to say most rigorous because all of our studios are rigorous, but our schedule wise is probably the most rigorous because a lot of other studios, their classes um, aren't, like their days are shorter um, or more spread out and they can be on campus so they can like run to their dorm between classes, which we can't. So we go in at nine and we leave at five and you're there all day. So I go in at nine and we have four courses in a day and they're each an hour and a half and we have a 30 minute break between each class. And during that 30 minutes, we have 15 minutes to um, transfer to the next studio space. Um, to grab a snack, whatever you need, get ready. And then we have 15 minutes where your ensemble is asked to be quiet. We call it the 15 minute rule in order to allow whoever's working that day to prepare. And sometimes it's upheld, sometimes it's not. It really depends on the class, on the teacher, on the subject matter that you're about to tackle. Um, yeah. So the classes, as far as classes, oh, and in the middle of the day, you get an hour long lunch also. Um, so for the classes, we have five classes as second year, second semester, and your courses change as you go through the years and even semester to semester. So right now we have comedy. So in comedy, um, we're looking at what are called lotsies, which are kind of um, physical, Im not improvs, they're set, um, but physical ways of storytelling and making them comedic. And then we're also doing comedic scenes. Um, yeah. So comedy. Um, and then we have through line, which I've explained earlier in another one. But what it is, is you pick uh, you and your teacher together, kind of decide on what play you're going to be working on. So, for example, I'm doing Hamlet. So I am playing Hamlet. I'm doing a gender bent Hamlet. And you for that class, it's all together, you're doing 20 minutes of your text. And so for the first round, you bring in about a 10 minute long scene. And then for the second round that you bring it into class, you um, add on 10 more minutes of material and you end up doing a 20 minute piece. And at the end of the year, we have a through line festival where you get to watch everyone's, which is new this year. So it's super exciting. All right. And then speech. Okay, so speech um, is all about this good old book by Edith Skinner. Um, so this is Speak with Distinction and it's all about IPA. And if you don't know what IPA is, it just kind of breaks down like sounds of words. Um, I can show you, this is written all over, but if you see, let me pick one out. Okay, so if you are saying um, a word with the p sound, so like pay or um they have cape where you release the sound um so that would be p, right it's released versus um play play you hold it you don't release that air sound so to write that if we're dissecting um kind of the the speech of it i hope you can see that but we have these different symbols to kind of notate that. Um, and it's really helpful when we get to working on dialects, um, being able to like break it down into almost a science. Um, yeah, so speech, super fun. And then voice class. So voice class for us is based off of the um, Jones 
um, text and the Fitzmorris work. And it's not like voice like singing. Um, it's voice like how you produce sound with your voice speaking. And it does a lot of work with like destructuring and finding what your natural voice is. And then also finding how to use your voice in service of the scenes and the characters that you are taking on. Um, it's so difficult to explain unless you've experienced it because it really is an experiential class. You just, you have to go through it. Um, and then Shakespeare. Um, Shakespeare is our only class that we have once a week. All of the other courses meet twice a week. And Shakespeare has been so much fun. So Atlantic, our like technique or approach to teaching drama, doing drama, is all off of David Mamet, and uh, you can read all about it in a practical handbook for the actor. And um, this is what we read our freshman year before we come in. This is the technique. Um, but what's funny is I actually had a class with um, Scott Ziegler, who is one of the, um, yeah, you can see his name's right there. Um, he's one of the people who wrote this book. And he was like, yeah, um, if you look through it, like a lot of those um, things that we put in, like don't follow the rules really. <laughs> so this is a good um, like precursor to our work, but it's definitely not a complete guide. Um, just because there are different things that like aren't quite right. Um, but there are others that are very specific, especially our action list if you're if you're going to read this that is like the action requirements will not lead you wrong um so this is what we use for most of our scene work this technique or idea but in shakespeare we actually have a teacher who's not familiar with practical aesthetics which is what we call that um which has been super fun because it's looking at how do we use our knowledge of practical aesthetics but then um translate it with a director who doesn't know that method and it's been great. We've been bringing in scenes. I'm working on a piece from Much Ado. Um, I'm doing the Beatrice and Benedict scene. So much fun. Incredibly fun. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm going to blame it on the fact that I just had a studio day in which this class was not had um, because of a different thing our studio is doing, but I totally forgot. We don't have five classes. We have six. And um, the sixth one is Suzuki slash Viewpoints. And oh my goodness, it's like one of my favorites. I can't even believe it. It's so funny because as I was like writing down my notes, I was like, hmm, is that really all of them? I feel like there's more. So just kidding. So Suzuki training, um, gosh, this is another one where it's so experiential. It's very difficult to explain. Um, but it's off of uh, Tadashi Suzuki. Um, his I just, it's going to take so long to go into all of the background and I, to do that justice, I would really need to make a whole video. So if that's something you want to do, let me know. But like, I really would want to honor that work, but it's basically a, um, form that puts your body in, um, like impossible physical positions to hold. And, um, then we are asked to like speak text from that position. So you like in many of these positions, you'll be trembling. And then how do you produce voice? And um, kind of the methodology behind it, and this is just so cursory, I oh, I can just feel my teacher being like, what, that's not it. Um, but it's, it's looking at like, when you're in a scene and when you have all of that like going on and when you're compromised by emotion, how are you still going to produce text? Um, and then the viewpoints is Anne Bogart's viewpoints. And that looks at um, how do we, like how are stories told, 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 I swear I go to NYU. How are stories told purely through our body? Like um, just how do we like watching someone um, step forward on stage at like a super, super slow pace and then um, gosh, like turn their head. Like what story does the audience like pull in just from that? And how can we use that to alleviate some of the pressure on actors for um, conveying the story? So that's Suzuki slash viewpoints. So I just thought I'd pop that in here. Back to the video. 
And as far as how studio set up, there's about, I want to say 60 ish, maybe 70 ish people in my year, which I know seems crazy big and it kind of is, but, um, we're all split up into different studio groups. So we have four groups. Um, so my group is 15 people this semester. So I'm with those 15 people all day and we go to all four of our classes together. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you're with that group for a semester, and then after a semester, it completely changes around. You get a whole new group, um, which is a little crazy and intimidating your first year, but um, incredible and so rewarding to get to meet everyone. So that's a very um, brief little Atlantic overview. Um, if you guys have any questions, anything you want answered, any questions about other studios, if you want to see that first year video or even talking about what third year looks like, I'd love to sit down and do those. Just leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like me to discuss next as far as NYU and Tish. Um, hope you guys are having a great day, great night, great morning, great, I don't know, life. Um, Go ahead and hit like for me and the subscribe button with the little bell also. Um, that way you can stay in touch with me and I will see you real soon. Best. <laughs>